Well, thank you everyone for joining. We are really excited to have you here and be able to talk and present about our reopening plans. We're very excited for our students to be able to come back into the building, but we wanna make sure that everything we do has safety in mind and as a priority. And so what we're going to be doing today is going through what reopening is going to look like and how we are going to be putting the safety of our students and staff first. Um, again, my name is Ms. Shanovich and I'm the resident principal here at Curie High School. And I would like to introduce you to some of the APs or assistant principals who are also um, working at Curie High School this year. I'm Brad Gill. I'm one of the assistant principals. I'm Suzanne Oladipo. I'm one of the assistant principals. And I'm Scarlett Miles, one of the assistant principals. Thank you. So because this is streaming, we still want you to be able to ask questions. Uh, you can use this QR code. You can use your phone. Um, if you open up your camera and point it towards that QR code, it will open up the link where you can submit questions that you have either now, any questions you have about what we present today. And even if you have questions later on that come up, you can still submit those questions via that form. Um, we will hold um, those questions or the answers we have for the questions until the end of this presentation. If they are questions about your um, individual student, we'll reach out to you via the contact information you provide on the form. Um, if they are questions that other people may need an the answer to as well, we'll try to answer them to the best of our ability at the end of this presentation. So I'll leave this up for a second so that people can catch that link. We will also show it at the end of the presentation um, to give you another chance to enter those questions. And so our agenda for today, first we wanna go over some of the district updates that we received from CPS. We wanna talk about the opt-in process. So how parents were able to um, choose whether they were having their children come back hybrid or if they would continue to be at home learning. We'll talk about the different hybrid schedules, the health and safety measures that we have in place to make sure all of your students and our staff are safe. Um, and then we'll talk about what the at-home learning days versus the in-home learning days will look like, what meals will be distributed during the day and um, on non-attendance days, what the Curie way looks like in the hybrid setting, and then we'll also give you an opportunity to um, submit your My Voice My School survey, and then we'll go through the questions and answers. So CPS distributed an opt-in form to all CPS families on the week of March 8th. And they sent that to the contact information that was on Aspen. Uh, so if there was an email on file, they sent it to emails and they additionally sent it via text to the phone numbers on file for Aspen. And parents were given the opportunity to complete that opt-in form or survey and choose either hybrid or at-home learning. The deadline for completing that survey or submitting those responses was March 23rd. At Curie, we knew that not everybody um, may have gotten emails due to not having emails on file. And so we checked on a daily basis to see who had submitted those responses. And for those families that we did not see responses for, we used parent outreach and our security to make phone calls to over 1,600 um, families. And because of that, we had over 80% of our families were able to respond to that survey. Um, after the March 23rd de deadline, we were able to get the reports from CPS um, about whether families opted to be hybrid or if they wanted to remain um, remote and have their students be at home once school reopens on April 19th. On April, or I'm sorry, on March 31st, we sent confirmation emails to all students and to all families who had emails on file confirming whether their students would remain at home for the remainder of the school year or 
if they had the opportunity to be hybrid based on their responses to that opt-in survey. Families who opted for at home are no longer able to opt in for the hybrid model this school year. Families who opted for hybrid can choose to keep their students fully remote if they choose to. Families who did not respond to that survey or did not respond to our outreach calls will remain at, with the at-home model, meaning their students will continue to learn remotely at home for this school year. Now, while April 19th, is the first day of the first qu for fourth quarter and it's our target day for students to return. We are aware that CTU and CPS are, have not reached an agreement and so they are still in discussion and they are productive discussions. So we are, we're, we're feeling very hopeful and confident that we will be reopening on the eight, nine, or April 19th. However, we want you to be aware that Things are always changing, and as soon as we have new information, or um, we'll be sharing that with you through the Condor Pride newsletter, through email blasts, and if needed, phone calls. But we want to make sure that as soon as we get communication, we are sharing that with you. Um, uh, we do know that our instructional model at reopening will be that hybrid model with two days of in-person instruction and um, two, three days of at-home instruction. That's what we're going to be talking about for the remainder of this um, meeting. There are some upcoming days of non-attendance. So while we'll go over the schedule of what in-person learning will look like for your students based on their schedule, we do want you to be aware that there are a couple days in April where there will be no classes, either remote or in-person for students. Um, those days are listed here. The 13th of April and the 27th of April are both official SAT days and we'll be holding those SATs here at Curie. So there will be no classes held. The students who will be taking the SAT on those dates have already been sent email communication about their test days um, and specific information on what that looks like for them. However, students who are not taking the SAT on those days will not be um, coming in person or engaging remotely. And then the other two days, this um, a week from Friday, the 16th, is a staff professional development day. So there will be no classes. And then the 22nd of April will be um, parent-teacher conferences. And so you'll have the opportunity to um, meet with your teacher virtually and we'll be sending more information about what that looks like and how you can attend those conferences in the upcoming um, weeks. So on your, on your students' at-home learning days, they will be participating and logging into classes just as they have been for um, the rest of the school year. Uh, they will be following their same schedule, they'll have the, their same teachers, um, really nothing will change for those at-home learning days. For in-person learning days, they will come to Curie and follow their schedule in the building. Um, and what we're going to discuss are the safety protocols, the technology um, that students will need to bring, uh, what student belongings they're able to bring and what that looks like, entry process and safety protocols, and then what that simultaneous instruction looks like how we're really prioritizing our students' social, emotional, and mental health needs, um, what meals look like in the building, and then the behavioral expectations when students are in the building. And the email that went out, um, if your student has a first period to eighth period schedule, they will be in-person learning on Mondays and Tuesdays. And their first day will be Monday, April 19th. Their schedule will be the same schedule that they have been following remotely. So their first period is 7.30 a.m. and they'll be in um, classes through 2.45 p.m. Um, in order to make enough time for them to get through the entry process, uh, they should arrive between 7 and 7.15 a.m. They will then have their at-home learning days, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So again, if your student has a first through eighth period schedule, they will be 
in person Mondays and Tuesdays, and they will be at home Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. And that is for students who had the confirmation email that they will be hybrid learning once we reopen. If they are second through ninth period students, um, they will be coming in person on Thursdays and Fridays. Their first day will be April 23rd. That's again, because on the 22nd it's report card pickup, so there are no classes. Their first class starts at 8.25 and they will be at school through 3.40 p.m. They should arrive between 7.45 and 8.15 to give them enough time to go through the entry process. And then they will be engaging remotely as they have been throughout the school year, Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays. All of this information was included in the confirmation email sent on March 31st. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to um, Curie so that we can answer those questions or enter them into that question and answer document that we'll provide at the end of this session. In order to acclimate our students and make sure they're aware of all the safety protocols um, and they understand the supports that are available to them, we are holding in-person orientation sessions for all students who have the hybrid model and will be returning to school for in-person learning. Um, those dates are listed here. During those times, we will also be holding um, some virtual parent meet and greet sessions hosted by one of our community partners. Um, during the orientation, students will practice that entry procedure since we do have additional um, safety and health protocols that students may not be used to, so they'll be practicing that. Um, they'll also be picking up their IDs um, if there are computers that they need to pick up, and then we will also be providing them with a PPE supply kit with um, additional cloth masks, hand sanitizer, and some other PPE items. And then with deans and assistant principals, they'll be reviewing the Curie way. They'll be learning about the mental health and academic supports that we have available at Curie while they're in person. And then for our freshmen who are new to the building, we will make sure that they're taking some building tours so they know how to get around on that first day of school in person. Those are going to be held um, next week, so the week of April 12th. And your students will be receiving email invitations um, tonight or tomorrow with the specific times that their orientation sessions will be held. Those sessions will be about an hour um, to an hour and a half. If it is held on a school day, they will be excused from school um, if they attend that orientation session. I'm going to let Mr. Gill kind of talk more about the health and safety protocols that we have in place for our students returning. Yeah, so all individuals entering the building must have completed and passed the health screener and temperature check. All students and staff will be required to wear a face covering. Face coverings will be removed for eating. Repeated non-compliance could result in the student being transitioned to full remote learning. Uh, students will be seated six feet away from one another, and we will keep them away from each other six feet away at, as much as possible. There's hand sanitizer in every classroom the building um, and throughout the hallways. Uh, staff and students will be required to wash their hands frequently and then all rooms also have air purifiers. Uh, there will be surveillance COVID testing for staff on a weekly basis and um, there's also an on-site uh, staff supervised care room for our students. So the daily health screener is to be completed daily before the students come to school. Everyone who enters the building needs to go through the temperature check process and have the daily health screener completed online. Um, if you scan your QR code, you can actually receive the link or if you type, uh, if you Google cps.edu uh, health, uh, health screener, you can find it that way. The health screener must be completed before entering the building and students should select Curie High School, Maine. Um, once they select the right location, then they will show up in our system. Anyone who fails the screener will be sent home. So in order to ensure a smooth um, entry process, it is really, really important that the students have this completed uh, before arrival. It can actually be part of their routine. The first thing they do when they wake up, and it's what I do as staff, is complete my health screener.
So the care room, all schools have an established care room that will serve as a staff supervised transitional space for excluded students who are waiting to be picked up or guardian. So students being ill that have COVID symptoms or have failed the health screener. Um, it's not a school-based health center or typical nurse's office. It is a dedicated room where children um, will be supervised while they're being waited uh, for their parents to come pick them up if they are displaying COVID symptoms or have failed the screener. All students and staff sent home with COVID-like symptoms should be di uh, diagnostically tested. If they are tested, staff and students must remain home from school until they receive the test results. Students and staff who are confirmed or probable cases of COVID-19 must complete 10 calendar days of isolation from the date of their first symptom and be fever free for 24 hours without using fever reducing medications and, uh, and other symptoms have improved before returning to school. Staff and uh, students and staff returning to school after experience COVID-like symptoms, but being di diagnosed with a non-COVID illness must meet the criteria for returning to school for the illness with which they have been diagnosed. At a minimum, the individuals must be fever-free for 24 hours and have not had um, and without using fever-reducing medication and have not had diarrhea or vomiting the previous 24 hours. Other diseases have specific criteria for when a student or staff member could return to school. A doctor's note documenting that alternative diagnostics or a negative COVID-19 test result should accompany the student or staff member returning to school with an alternative diagnosis after experience COVID-like symptoms. Um, if you need assistance receiving free medical uh, clinics for those needed, you can call the CPS Health Hotline at 773-553-KIDS for assistance. Again, if you need assistance in locating free or reduced medical clinics, uh, you can call the CPS Healthy Hotline at 773-553-KIDS for assistance. Staff and students with COVID-like symptoms who do not get tested for COVID-19 and do not provide a health care pro provider's note of an alternative diagnosis must complete 10 calendar days of isolation from the date of their first symptom onset. Be fever-free uh, for 24 hours without using a fever reducer medication and other systems have improved. Note, mild symptoms may be COVID in addition to symptomatic. Take the next few weeks to talk to your pediatrician to find out the testing protocol because if they have a runny nose, you may, uh, may need slash want to get them tested. You want to know this protocol now and find out when timing of testing is planned and the office protocols. If there is a positive case, the case must, uh, the, positive, the, the student's parents must report the positive case at cps.edu slash COVID results. An investigation will be conducted to identify an infectious period of the individual and next steps will be communicated to the school community. This may result in a quarantine for impacted staff and or students depending on the results of the investigation. If students are quarantined, they will remain home and participate in remote learning during that quarantine period. Again, the website is cps.edu slash COVID results. If your student has a positive COVID test, we ask that that's where you report it. All right, so then we're gonna look at the difference between close contact and non-close contact. For close contact, individuals who have been within six feet of a COVID-19 infected person for a cumulative of 15 minutes or more over a 24 hour period. Anyone who has close contact with someone with COVID-19 uh, should stay home for 14 days after their last exposure of that uh, person. Uh, for CPS, contact tracing will notify via email and require quarantine for 14 days. Non-close contact. Individuals who have been in the building at the same time as a COVID-19 infected person, but were not in close contact. Quarantining is not needed. Contact tracing will notify via email, but not require students to quarantine. Uh, Katie, you're on mute. 
So students are permitted to bring their backpacks to school with school items only. So no personal items should be brought from home. Um, and backpacks will be scanned through the x-ray machines during the entry process. And so um, anything that's prohibited per the CPS um, student code of conduct continues to be prohibited. Um, so additionally, like glass containers, et cetera, those things should not be brought to school. Um, they are not going to be issued lockers this school year due to the short amount of time that we're going to be in person in the building. And so they will be expected to carry their belongings with them throughout the day. Um, so just keep that in mind when uh, they're packing their bag that they're gonna have to be carrying those things throughout the day. Students will be expected to bring their CPS issued computer and power cord with them on those in-person days. Um, unfortunately, we cannot allow um, the non-CPS devices or personal devices um, at school. They actually will not work with our CPS um, network. And so we advise you to not have the, your students bring their personal devices. We know, however, that there are students who do not have CPS issued devices. And so um, I think I mentioned earlier, the tech team is working on contacting families um, at Curie who don't have those CPS devices. Uh, we, we have a record of who has the CPS devices. So if you do not currently have a CPS device, um, you will be contacted by school as soon as we have devices available. Um, we will also have some of that, uh, the device pickup be available on those orientation days. So if your student does not have a CPS device and we have them available, they'll be able to pick those up on the orientation days that they come in next week. Um, we are also uh, kind of continuously getting more devices from the district. And so as we get more devices, we're able to hand those out. But again, we'll be reaching out to you directly um, to set up a time for you to come pick up a CPS device in the event that you do not already have one for your student. And I just want to emphasize they do need to be bringing those computers with them on their in-person days with the power cord. We don't want their computers dying during fourth period um, and we will have plenty of plugins for students um, so just make sure they have that power cord with them. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the entry process. Um, we're using, traditionally we would normally just use our archer doors for entrance, um, but to, to, to do it in a safely manner and uh, keep students um, in smaller groups entering the building, you will be assigned um, a door. It will be either the Pulaski doors, archer doors, or park doors. And you'll receive that information um, during your orientation about which door you'll be expected to enter. Um, So students, uh, for the entry times, again, doors will open at 7. We ask that you get there before 7.15 if you are a first through 8 start on Monday or Tuesday. And doors will open at 7.55 for second through ninth. Uh, there will be socially distancing upon entry, so all students should be six feet apart. You will complete uh, the health screener. Again, that should be done before you get to the school, so that's the first thing you do in the morning. Um, a temperature check. And then scanning your student ID that you will receive during orientation. And then you will go through our metal detector um, and scanner to put your bag through the scanner. And then these process, we will actually go through at orientation. Um, students will be directed to the lunch rooms um, on Monday, Tuesday until 725 or 820 during Thursday, uh, Friday, at which time they will transition to their first class. Breakfast will only be available to eat in the lunchrooms. If students wish to have breakfast, they must arrive early enough to be able to eat breakfast before the first period. So they will not be able to take that breakfast with them to their class. Um, going throughout the building, we will still have five minute passing periods. Hallways will be supervised to ensure social distancing is being man maintained and bathrooms have been set up um, to ensure that uh, students will maintain social distancing in the bathrooms. So for those in-person learning days and actually for all of the days of instruction, 
it will move to simultaneous instruction. What simultaneous instruction means is that um, teachers will be teaching both the students who are learning remotely at home and the students who are in person um, at the same time. So we're not changing any of our bell schedule or instructional minutes. Those are all remaining the same um, as aligned with uh, Illinois State Board of Education guidelines. So the expectation is not that the teacher is just going to be streaming what they're doing in the classroom and the remote students are watching. It is going to be a interactive um, environment between the students who are at home and the students who are in the building. Um, and we're really working with the staff to figure out ways to build community and bridge those two groups of students um, uh, during the classroom. And again, both sets of students will be following their same schedules. They will have the same teachers, regardless of whether they are at home or they are in the building. And to, to make sure that we have um, the technology that is needed for that simultaneous instruction, we have done a great deal of classroom and building technology upgrades. So um, we have upgraded over 90 of our classrooms to have smart whiteboards or Prometheans, if you're um, familiar with that technology. Um, we also have smart web cameras. So those are ones that will follow the teacher around as they are walking around the room. We also have additional plugins in the classroom. Like I mentioned when I talked about bringing that power cord. Um, and we also have headsets with microphones for students to use. Additionally, questions have been asked about how are, how are schools going to be able to handle the, the Wi-Fi bandwidth with all of these students on computers at one time. So we actually have um, purchased a Wi-Fi bandwidth management system, which means that we can control the bandwidth on the CPS devices so that we can ensure that um, computers don't crash and, and, te and teachers and students can continue to um, engage in learning. Uh, we also... Uh, purchase some ed tech tools for our teachers that um, have been able to kind of increase the engagement of both virtual and now simultaneous learning. One of those is Pear Deck. Um, I'm sure many of the students on this call will know what Pear Deck is. And then there's also Cami, which is like a document based system where people can interact on that document. So just like there are, there was an opt-in process for students, there is, are, will also be some teachers who will be continuing to teach remotely due to accommodations approved by the district. Um, that does not mean that your student will not have that teacher anymore. Uh, if your student is in a class period that has a remote teacher, they will be assigned to a remote learning room for that period of in-person learning days, and they'll participate in their class using their CPS device. Um, those remote learning rooms will be supervised by qualified Curie staff members who will provide academic, behavioral, and technology support during those class periods. So for example, if I have a fifth period, my teacher is in the building, but sixth period, I have a remote. After fifth period, I will go to my sixth period remote learning room, and I will log into my remote Google Classroom and engage with my teacher and my other classmates remotely. Um, and there will be a Curie staff member in that classroom to help me with any technology or academic needs I might have during that class period. Our diverse learners will continue to receive special education services regardless of their hybrid learning or remote learning status. And the services they receive will still be based on their IEPs. Special education teachers and special education classroom assistants will be present in person as well as remotely. And for those diverse learners who are eligible for transportation as a related service, those services will continue and the recipients will be contacted directly by someone from transportation regarding routes and schedules. So um, we will still continue providing our students with social and emotional supports. We have a behavior health team um, that is that will be supporting students in person and online. Um, our behavior health team consists of our counselors, social workers, school psychologists, our school deans, um, our assistant principals, 
and um, our GAD, GADS Hill partner. And so when students need um, certain supports, uh, they, their counselors or teachers refer them and we connect them either with community partners or counselor or social worker to then provide those supports. But if your student is um, returning in person, they may still receive supports in person and online. Um, all students should still continue to follow the Curie way. Um, this is something that's expected year in, year out from our students. Um, and, and now it's even more important that our students um, come to the school and model the, 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 the Curie way. Uh, be respectful, open-minded, kind, hardworking, and um, responsible. The code of conduct will apply during this time. It is expected that students wear masks at all times. Um, it will be considered a discipline issue if they are not wearing their masks. Students loitering, which is disrupted in the school's health and safety protocols, can result in the student being asked to return to online learning. Um, so in, in, in the past, we always took the safety of our students really serious and the Curie Way has helped us keep our students safe. We want to continue modeling that um, during this time. So um, in terms of meals, in per on during in-person learning days, students will be provided that grab and grow breakfast that we discussed earlier. Um, and then they will report to their assigned lunchroom just as they did last year or at, at their previous schools. They'll have an assigned lunchroom, they'll go, they will be provided with that school lunch or students do have the ability to bring their own lunch. However, any food brought into the school um, is for individual consumption only. And then just remember that they're going to have to carry that with them all day because they will not be able to use um, any of the locker uh, services. Uh, they will only be allowed to eat in the lunchroom. Um, and then, of course, students are allowed to carry water bottles with them at all times. However, um, again, they should not be glass bottles um, for safety purposes. Uh, we are we will continue to be that a CPS meal distribution site as we have been um, during um, this entire year and starting during the closure last year. So you are able to pick up meals at our Pulaski entrance from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Monday through Friday. Um, students, however, um, will be able to get those meals during the day that they are in person, but on those um, at-home learning days, you're able to pick up the meals at the Pulaski entrance. Um, this information is also included in the Condor Pride newsletter each week, and it also has a link to all CPS meal distribution sites in the city. So some of the things that you can do to prep your student before we return or we are planning to return on the 19th, one, prep your child for new routines. I know I am already prepping myself to wake up earlier in the morning and students really need that routine. And if you start it earlier with them, as opposed to the first day they have to come back, it's going to be a much easier transition. Additionally, being away from school for the length of time that your child has been um, can elicit a great deal of feelings, especially um, with it being in the context of a global pandemic. Uh, you really want to make sure you discuss their feelings about going back to school. Um, and if you think that your child may need additional um, social emotional services, please reach out to their counselor. Um, or respond to the Condor Pride newsletter and we will connect them with um, someone to speak with. But um, also make sure they attend that orientation, right? We're designing that specifically to make transmit transition as smooth as possible for them. And so that they really understand uh, the safety procedures and they feel comfortable coming back that first week of school. Additionally, like I mentioned, have them start that new sleep routine as soon as possible. Um, I also suggest for that orientation day that you have them take the mode of transportation that they will take on a normal school day. That will allow them to kind of time the route and see how long it's going to take them, um, not only just to get to school in the morning, but to get up in the morning, get themselves ready, do their health screener, get on the bus or train um, or in your car, and how long that's going to take so that the first day they, they don't feel rushed, they feel comfortable and confident. 
one of the themes that the staff here at Curie have been really um, coming back to again and again this year is the idea of being like water. Um, with so many changes in our current context, we really just have to be flexible and, and be able to um, handle any change that comes with, with the context, right? We know that reopening is, is a huge lift for everyone. It's a lift for parents. It's a lift for students. It's a lift for the staff. Uh, and, and the new model, really, it's going to require grace and patience on um, the part of the staff, on the part of the students, and the part of our parents. And so we just really want to um, head into this, this new chapter um, with that grace and that patience, um, thinking about, you know, our, our Curie way. There will be bumps in the road, but we know and we're confident that together um, we'll be able to figure them out so that we can get our students back in the building learning safely. We really appreciate and value your voice. We see our parents and our community as partners in um, the building of our learning community. And one of the ways that we um, incorporate your voice into our decision making is through the My Voice My School survey that CPS um, puts out every year. You can use this QR code um, to access the link to that survey. Uh, the survey link will also be in the Condor Pride newsletter this week. Um, the deadline for submitting that survey is April 30th. It's about five to 10 minutes and it is available in multiple languages. We would really appreciate your feedback. Um, and hearing from you about your experience this school year. I'm going to leave that up for just a second. Our next slide will be that question and answer document again. And so that will be another opportunity for you to submit questions. So again, that is a QR code. If you hold your phone up to the screen, um, you will be able to um, get that link. And I also can drop it in the chat. Um, all right. So. Uh, so just looking at the first question was regarding um, the st a student's Chromebook, a CPS issued Chromebook. If you, the student is having issues with the Chromebook, like it being too slow or, or not working correctly, um, you could have it swapped out for another CPS Chromebook. But um, if your student plans on returning to, to Curie, it has to be a CPS issue device. So if you want to um, bring that Chromebook to carry any day during the week to the park side doors before 6 p.m. We could swap it out and try another one that might be faster um, to see if there's if there's any other issues. So if there are issues with the Chromebook, um, we can swap it out and give you a new CPS Chromebook. But unfortunately, personal devices will not work in the building. So it is important that your student has a CPS issue device. I also see a question about how do I know if my child is coming back hybrid or continuing remote learning. Again, those email confirmations were sent on March 31st. You can also call school um, at 773-535-2100 and you can ask them to look that up that is on file so you can get that um, question answered just by calling school. Um, I also see will students receive textbooks for classes. So textbook distribution was done at the beginning of the year. And then there has been ongoing um, material distribution done by teachers. Um, so there will not be additional textbook distribution at this time because students have all the materials that they need. Um, there will be 
um, textbook collection or material collection in the coming weeks. Um, as we get closer to the end of the school year, we will be asking that students start to return those materials um, to school and we will um, communicate that with students in their classes as well as via our um, Condor Pride newsletter. So you'll get information about the returning of textbooks. Um, another question I saw was regarding the backpacks. Um, you do you are not required to have a clear backpack. You can in fact you bring your own backpack, whatever that backpack uh, may look like. You can you know you can bring your own backpack, but you will not have access to lockers. So um, just keep that in mind when packing that backpack. One more thing, all backpacks will go through our bag screener um, when the students are going through the entry process. Okay. I don't see any additional questions at this time, but we will wait for a few minutes. Um, again, you can always, you can continue to submit these questions and we'll, if it's a individual question about your child, we'll reach out directly to the contact information that you provide. If it is an overall question, we'll try to incorporate the responses to those questions um, in the Condor Pride newsletter or other communications that we are sending out to parents. Um, another important thing to note, if you do not have, or if you are not receiving emails, from Curie, that may mean that we do not have an accurate email on file for you. It is very important that we have accurate contact information for you. So if at any time you need to update your phone number, your email address, or your address, you can always call school directly and they will update that, update that information for you. Is there anything that um, Mr. Gill or Ms. Miles you'd like to add before we sign off? Um, just thank you all for engaging with us tonight. And um, we are really excited to, to have your students back with us. Um, it's, it's um, you know, it's, it's been a long year and thank you for, thank you everyone who's, you know, stuck with us and we will continue to operate uh, safely and provide your students with the best possible learning experience we can provide. Yes, I agree with what Mr. Gill just shared. We are very eager to have students return to the building and we're excited about the opportunity to engage in simultaneous learning and give our students a chance to really have a deeper experience as condors within our actual school community. So we're excited and looking forward to seeing them and Please feel free to reach out to us if you have questions. You can reach us directly through the Curie website, through the directory, if you have specific questions about any of the things that we mentioned during today's session. If any of the questions pertain to diverse learners specifically, you can reach out to me directly as well. Yes. And as someone new to Curie, I am beyond excited to see students in the building. Um, and welcome you back. Um, again, thank you for joining us. You can feel free to continue asking questions either through this form or by calling or emailing us. Um, thank you for joining and have a safe rest of your night. It's still light out because it's almost springtime. So enjoy the last bits of a warm spring day. <laughs>